With over 500,000 trees and shrubs already planted and growing, it's easy to forget you are in the city. We don't just say, we do. It's the Stain City Way. Welcome to Real Talk on SABC3, where the stage is yours. They say that infidelity is the ultimate betrayal in a relationship. If that is the case, why then do we continuously cheat on our partners? Is it because we get bored? What about the notion that it's possible to have feelings for more than one person at once? And do you believe people who say that an affair actually helped their marriage to become stronger? A little later in the show, we're getting into the messy reasons we cheat and the heartbreaking impact it has on our relationships and self-worth. But before that, we're going to take a look at the impact that lying to each other has on our relationships. Men lie, women lie. The question is why. To start off our conversation on the psychology of lying, we welcome clinical psychologist Ingrid Nagia. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Adela. Talk to me. So when people say, I never lie, that's a lie, right? Absolutely. Because? <laughs> well, I think there's, there's a wonderful study that DePaulo did in 1997. And what she found was that both men and women lie. Mm. And it is as much as one fifth of our social interactions. <laughs> that, so basically, that's, that's a lot of lying. Pretty much. Okay. So. okay, so then why do people think lying is such a bad thing then? Because there's never, there's never a good connotation associated with it, right? Mm. I think that whenever we think about lying, we need to firstly define what lying means. So yeah. you've got the white little lie. Yes. Um, and it's Give me an example of a white little lie. You look really good today. Uh, okay. <laughs> so it's it's more about being able to. to I just took that so personally <laughs> because she did tell me I look good when she got. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, it's about you know saving somebody's feelings uh -huh. and and avoiding some sort of conflict. Okay, but then. Mm -hmm. If I'm in a relationship with someone and I cheat on them and they ask me if I did, I am saving their feelings if I say, no, I didn't cheat on you. That's true. So then it's a white little lie. But it's also motivated by your selfish reasons. So, for example, with your partner, did you not decide that this was going to be a mutually exclusive relationship? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it goes back to intention. Mm -hmm. And I think that whenever we, we, we look at lying, we have to be able to think about intention. Mm -hmm. um, if the intention is to save somebody's feelings, um, then perhaps we can call it a white lie. Mm. But if it's more than that, if there's malice behind it or if it is um, um, uh, selfishly driven, mm -hmm. then you kind of like have to think about what, well, what are those impacts in terms of a relationship because it will detract away from things like trust and intimacy. Mm. If I'm lying uh, based on my, and we're human, so we've got a survival instinct. Sure. So let's say I'm lying because my survival instinct is kicking in. Could you then take that and file it under selfish? It depends on how far that lie goes uh -huh. and what kind of impact it has on the people around you. So, for example, if you're lying simply to save your own skin, yes, to the detriment of everybody else, uh -huh. then we kind of like have to look at that. And if you know that you haven't changed your behavior, uh -huh. so most often than not, you know, we look at lying in a relationship and we go, okay you know, this is what I'm trying to save. I'm trying to save the relationship, but you haven't changed your behavior that's going to be hurtful to the relationship. Uh, so your intention okay. is really just about self-preservation and, and looking at selfish needs. Okay, mm. Th this is where that uh, statement, apologies change behavior comes Absolutely. from. Absolutely. If you're caught in a lie, you apologize. Sure. It means you're about to change your behavior. I wanna take, um, the focus of relationships for a little bit. Sure. Why do people lie in general? I mean, when we then, um, when we posted this on, on social media saying, this is what we want to discuss, please mm. come through with what you're feeling. Somebody said they started lying at a young age because they were in a, their family wasn't economically fit to be where they grew up. So they had to lie all the time about what they have and, mm. and, and you know, who their parents are, the importance of their family. Where does that lying fit in there? 
So I think it comes back to emotional uh, maturity. Yeah. So for example, you know, when we're younger, you find that lying is a, mm. um, an adjustment issue. Mm. So, you know, children between the ages of, let's adjustment say... Adjustment issue. Yes. So That's children perfect. between the ages of three and five will lie to get out of trouble. Mommy says, you can't have the sweet. Yeah. You eat the sweet and mommy says, did you eat the sweet? And you go, no, I didn't. Mm. Okay, because you don't want the negative consequences. But as you get older and the thinking brain is more dominant, mm. you know, this is your rational thought processes um, to be able to, to think through consequences and that sort of thing. Mm. Um, then you should be adjusting your behavior accordingly. Mm. Whereas if you get caught up in lying all the time, then it's more of, well, I haven't had the emotional maturity mm. around you know, developing those skills. So as with adjusting your behaviors when you're a young child to, you know, then in your early teens and then late teens and then adulthood, do we then adjust the way we deal with liars, right? So I, I am a mother to a, 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 a toddler, right? Mm -hmm. Am I dealing with his lying differently than I would deal with if my child was 14 or if my partner who's, what, 38? Absolutely. I think your little one who is a toddler, for example, it's, it's more, we would classify more along the lines of white lie. Yeah. Okay, because it's, there's no malice. Mm. Your teenager, on the other hand, might be lying to, to let's say, um, divert from drugging mm. or drinking. Mm. You know, so the consequences are a little bit more um, uh, impactful. Mm. Whereas your 38 year old partner mm. might be lying for other reasons. Mm. So mm. I would definitely look at the impact of the lying Mm. along the way and then evaluate the accordingly. The impact of the lie. Mm. And how should we be dealing? Because, I mean, when you know somebody's a pathological liar, okay, is, is there a way to spot a pathological liar besides just knowing? Well, I think pathological liars, firstly, the intention, you know, the, the, there's the intention around the lying. To deceive. Absolutely. Yeah. The intention is to deceive, but more importantly, it's more self-serving. Aha. Uh -huh. And it's a pervasive pattern, it's enduring. So for example, you'll see it over and over and over in different types of relationships, not just the intimate yes, relationships. Yes, yes, yes. It will be family, yeah. it will be friends. So most often than not, you'll find that they have a long list of ruined relationships because of the, the impact of lies. Yeah. If you ask them, why is it that all of these people have left or why have these relationships broken They will down? lie. They will lie <laughs> and they will say, it wasn't my fault. This person was just awful to me. You know, so they take no responsibility. Pathological lies do not hold themselves accountable for the relationship breaking down. Uh -huh. mm. And then, is there a cure for path pathological lies? Or is there a case you're like, you know, you're 45, <laughs> this is you, we're just waiting for you to die? You know, I think what, okay, I, this is from the psychology yes, sort of background, good. right? So, I mean, if I didn't believe that people couldn't change behavior, I wouldn't be doing the work that I do. This is true. Right? Um, but in order for you to be able to change your behavior, you have to develop insight. So the easiest way to, de to define insight would be taking intellectual information, emotional information, putting them together so that you can develop insight. And insight moves behavior or shifts behavior. So a pathological liar who becomes insightful will mm. be able to change the behavior. Mm -hmm. But how many pathological liars do you know that will sit on my couch and talk about the lies? Mm. So our difficulty becomes, becomes in, in, in the way of they don't take responsibility. Mm. If they were taking responsibility, yes, of course, we could help them change that behavior. Can you spot a lie? Can you? I, I have to know them. Uh, you know, if, if, if I'm just like at a party and someone is like t t talking about... Uh, you know, their cars and their private just I'm like, really? Hey, you know, <laughs> well done. I don't necessarily look out to, 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 for somebody who's deceiving me, but right. I think if there's three or four engagements, then I can That's spot. That's it. So most often than not, you, you'll spot a pathological liar because there's a repeat of the same kind there's of behavior. Pattern. There's a pattern in behavior, which means that you need more than one interaction. Oh. You know, the other thing yeah. is that it's a very descriptive, elaborate lie that yeah. will come back yeah. at you. And when you question them on that lie, they generally become quite defensive. Uh, and, okay. and then it wears thin. Okay. Then you know, okay, there's something there.
All right, listen, Ingrid will return a little later in the show. We will be looking at forgiving our partners for all the lies that they've put us through. So now that we know why we lie, let's get into the consequences that these lies have on our relationships. We also want to hear your stories of when you were caught in a lie or when a lie completely destroyed your relationship. Send your 20-second vo WhatsApp voice notes to the number that you see on the screen. We'll be right back. And welcome back to Real Talk right here on SABC3 where the stage is yours. Today we promise to bring you the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I don't know why I'm smiling when I say that. Maybe I'm lying. As we get into the reasons and implications for lying in our intimate relationships, saying you were at your boy's house when you were actually at the strip club, withholding information about your finances from your husband, that's lying, or lying about a secret child, we've heard them all. The lies that plague our relationships come in many different forms, but one common thing about any lies is that it breaks trust and causes pain. It's time now to get insights from our experts. You'll remember our relationship coach, Kofi Ofori Boteng, author and motivational speaker, Martin the Love Doctor, Manamela is here as well, and we welcome to Real Talk, life coach, Tembi Hama. Welcome guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank, okay. you. thank you for everything. Dr. Love, I'll start with you there, the love doctor. Yes. Okay, so if lying is a fear of loss, right? Mm -hmm. But isn't fear of loss essential to love? Isn't fear of loss essential, essential to love? It is. Yeah. It is. But look, at the end of the day, like we, we were just saying earlier on, people lie for different reasons, right? Yeah. Of course, one of them being the fact that at the end of the day, if I tell the truth, mm -hmm. I might give up the control. Uh -huh. That's one of the reasons. Because I'm telling a lie because I want to influence a particular, uh, a particular decision. Yeah. But if I yeah. tell you the truth, then unfortunately I might, I might not influence it enough and you might end up taking this particular mm -hmm. decision. And on top of that at the same time, I lie because I want you to respect me. Mm. Yeah. So I lie for different, we lie for different reasons. Mm -hmm. so, so at the end of I the day, I want you to can... respect the person that I'm portraying to be. Exactly. Uh -huh. it's because, because I know that uh, behind this person, there's just a mess that uh -huh. you might not, uh, you know, respect. Uh -huh. And at the same time, um, you know, I'm lying. Okay, I need to put it this way. When you lie, yes. the unfortunate part is this, you need to maintain the lie. Yeah. And when you maintain the lie, yeah. then you have to tell a bigger lie, and a bigger lie, and another bigger lie. Okay, so you but now, you Timby, you're nodding. You're mm -hmm. nodding, and then you're like, mm, and then you're nodding, <laughs> and then you, it's, it's like you're there, but you're not there. What's your take? Um, he's right. It's fear-based. I'm afraid you'll find out who I am. Mm. Um, I'm trying to portray something that I'm not. Um, it, it's it's fear-based, and then we expand it to say it also could be low self-esteem. There's so many reasons. There's so many root causes. It could be a low self-esteem. If I believe that I'm not worthy, mm. I'll, 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 I'll think that everybody else can see through that. Mm. So so I tell lies to, to portray what I want you to believe about mm. me. It could also even go deeper. Um, maybe I had a past trauma. Uh, maybe something happened to me yes. uh, that wounded me inside and from uh, maybe it's childhood or whichever age mm. um, I started telling myself a lie uh, people um, usually switch into a fantasy um, in, into a fantasy world if they want if, if they don't want to leave the reality for that moment mm. and the problem with with trauma uh, and medicating it with fantasy is that over time I start to believe mm. the lie. The mm. problem with so, trauma yeah. and medicating, medicating it, it. fantasy. Yeah. Yay, the brain so came I start to the to, show today. I start yeah? to believe yeah. the lie. So when I start to believe the lie, I tell it as if Into it's in the, in, in the natural. So it's difficult to actually repair that because I actually believe what I say. And it's mm. difficult for you to spot it mm. because I'm telling it just like somebody would tell the truth. So Kofi, yeah. um, Martin touched on control, yeah. right? and then Utembi touch on portray. Yeah. For me, those two things are basically the same thing because mm -hmm. you are portraying something mm -hmm. to maintain control. Yeah. Now, I, I come to you, I read something very interesting today where they said that the more of yourself mm. you bring to a relationship, mm -hmm. the less reasons you will have to go and go somewhere else. Exactly. You say precisely. Yeah. Rhyme with me. Well, here's the thing. So, um, Ingrid was talking about uh, children, for example. Yes. 
and she was talking about how kids um, lie to sort of preserve themselves. Yeah. And I think some of the, one of the major reasons why they do that is it's, it's, a, it's an issue of safety. And sometimes we as parents are also guilty of creating unsafe situations for our kids because we don't, we're not necessarily teaching them consequences, we're teaching them punishment. Yes. You lied, you're going to get a spanking. You lied, you're going to get a scolding. You lied, it's a timeout. Uh -huh. So as a person grows up with that kind of thinking and they, they um, develop this um, need to please others and yes. need to portray this, this, this character, to this personality to punishment. others, to avoid the punishment of not being who you're portraying yourself to be. That's always going to be an issue. And the, you're quite right. The more of yourself you bring to the relationship, the less you have to lie about, Ooh. the less you have to, um, uh, what's the word, gild or embellish mm. um, going forward. And at the same time, you know, um, the, the point you made earlier about fear and love. Um, I'm a strong believer that fear is actually the opposite of love, not hate, rather fear. Mm -hmm. So fear, fear cannot exist in the same place as love. If you genuinely love yourself, then that means you're not ashamed of who you are. You're mm -hmm. not ashamed of the consequences of presenting yourself to as the world. Who you are. If you're not accepted, you're not accepted. That's, it. That's the harsh reality. Yeah. You keep it moving. But the moment you now start feeling the need to hide who you are, um, based on fear, you're now, you think you're controlling the situation, but really, who are you controlling? Yeah, yourself. Because you're lying to yourself. Yeah, you're lying yeah. to yourself. Okay, the voice notes are coming in. Let's go to the first one. There's a question. Yeah, what a topic. Thank you. But I need to know, if your partner cheat and blames you for his cheating, what can you do? We're gonna take that one to the doctor, <laughs> <laughs> the love doctor. Yeah, no, that's, that's just manipulation. Yeah. You know, uh, because I don't want you to say I'm weak in, you know, and, and I, sometimes I do not even have good reasons why I'm cheating. Mm. Because maybe it might be that I don't have self-control, I don't have discipline, but I cannot come to you and say, well, I cheated because mm. I don't have discipline. I'll mm. just look at you and say, okay, what is it that I can pick up from this person that I can make them feel guilty of mm. whatever it is that I did? Mm. Why? Because I don't want to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I will manipulate you so into believing. And the more I say this thing, you know, the, the, that's the thing about lying mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and truth at the same time. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. People don't, like, rather, rather truth does not determine what you believe. Truth does not determine what you believe. Perception does. But, but yeah. repetition does. Repetition okay. determines what you believe. Okay. So if I say a lie, one lie, over and over and over, and you, you want to start by saying, but it cannot be me. It cannot be yeah. me. And we argue about uh, over, an, over a long time, a few years down the line, you start thinking, but maybe, mm. maybe it's me. That's how belief systems are formed. Truth mm. does not determine what you believe. Repetition does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Timmy, mm -hmm. your take on uh, our WhatsApp voice note? Um, usually when we cheated on, it's us. I mean, I, I, I'll come and say, why did you do it? Yeah. Why did you do this to me? Um, so I, I, I suppose maybe it's even the line of questioning. Mm. Um, maybe asking how did this happen? Um, because the problem with saying why, it, it, the, the minute somebody says why, it's accusatory on its own. So yes. to avoid punishment, I'll say, yeah, because you've been neglecting me. you never here. So if we say, how did this situation happen? Um, it, 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 I'm not accusing anyone. I'm saying in this situation, how yeah. did this happen? What happened? Um, I, I think what everybody needs to know is that there's no excuse for cheating. Um, if I was a responsible person and I wasn't happy in the relationship, I have two options. Yeah. Um, I either speak to you about whatever my uh, grievances are mm -hmm. and we work on them, or I exit the relationship. Th those are the only two options that are there. So cheating is never an option. Okay, we have to take an ad break. Kofi, you're coming back later. With you, mm -hmm. I want to leave because Martin said, you know, there wasn't even a good enough reason to cheat. I want to know, is there ever a good enough reason to there cheat? There was never a good enough reason to cheat. <laughs> ever. <I> mean, <laughs> the word itself says it all, cheat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And l what generally happens to cheaters when they, they get caught? They get stripped of respect, they get stripped of reputation, they yeah. get stripped of um, awards, whatever it is. And this is cheating in sports, cheating this in a mass test, cheating, cheating, cheating across the board. Steinoff. <laughs>
<laughs> Coming up after the break, what do you do when you find out the man you've been in a relationship for months with went and married someone else? This is a reality for many women. My next guest knows the story all too well, and she's here to share it with us. They'll be back. Don't worry about it. And welcome back to Real Talk on SABC3. The stage is yours. A young girl in her 20s meets a guy that she gets into a relationship with for several months. Sounds like typical, sounds like a typical and harmless relationship, right? Most relationships, they begin like that. Well, for Tato Mahaka, her relationship was about to take a turn that would ultimately lead to heartbreak and people's lives forever being impacted. Thank you so much for coming to share your story with us. No problem. It, it is the normal story, actually. Mm -hmm. Do you, okay, so when you're going through the heartbreak and the tears and the lies, do you find that it's unique to you or do you understand that, oh, this happens to so many of us? No, it was so unique to me because I was so young and innocent. So I just, in my head, I pictured this perfect relationship where we're going to get married one day, have kids and, like, yeah. you know, live, really hap live happily ever after, but it never happened. But I never thought, like, everyone else goes through it. I thought really? it was just... Why is it happening to me? That's why I was so bitter for so long. Uh -huh. I never actually got to deal with it. So we'll, we'll go to the beginning because now everyone's like, what? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Tato, yes. Tell us. Yes. So you meet this guy, you're dating, and then at about seven months, your friend sends you a picture that he's getting married. Yes. The picture was in a newspaper, and I remember it was, I was at my, it was a family gathering, so we were all chilling with my cousins in the bedroom. Oh, when are your boyfriend? Oh, my boyfriend. And then she sends this picture. I'm like, I really paused. I was like, and it was at night. I literally took off. I was not even wearing shoes. I was just so hurt. And I didn't believe that. How is this? Ha this is not true. Because he told me he was going in a camp. I'm not going to be around. I can't see you. Kanti is actually getting married. I'm like, wow. Okay, so that initial feeling, do you feel like you've been punched in your stomach? Like, guh, guh. No, it was like jabs <laughs> of like Kaza or something. It was horrible. It was, it was, I, I just, I thought it was a joke. Yeah. Like, no, man, somebody's probably just pulling a prank on yeah. you or something. But it was, it was true. So when you... OK, how quickly do you confront him after that? Immediately. You... I oh. sent it to him immediately. And then he didn't respond. And I think two days later, that's when he came over. I was like, no, man, there was nothing. We're not married. It's just because she's pregnant. She has a child with me. So I have to protect that. And Were all you aware it that wasn't... there was a child? No. Okay. I wasn't aware of anything. To me, the, the relationship at that time, I didn't have these instincts of Google who he is. Yeah. Like, ask, find out information, be, be yeah. like a PI or something. I was just in an innocent relationship, and that's how I usually handle relationships. It's so just you all... never felt like there was, there was another woman never. or there were other women? He was always around. We'd always go out with his friends, and like, it was, oh, it was never, never. Mm. I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> but you only find out later yeah. that, you know, you don't trust friends. So do you continue the relationship and then find out again, or do you break up with him when he... We broke up. Then and there? Yes. Okay. That was in January. And then, obviously, now, when you break up, you don't just switch off feelings. Mm. They're still there. Yeah. And then, like, there was a time where he was like, no, let's just chill. Like, maybe this will be our closure, because now we can't be together. Uh -huh. And unfortunately, unfortunately for me, because I got my son, that was when I conceived. So you son. guys got back together? Yes. When no, you... it wasn't... It was just that thing of... Okay. We thought it was closure. Yeah. But, obviously, the, the feelings were still there. We rekindled some of the things that, you know, were just left unsaid. Is it, is it easier to be with him when you... Because now you know your place. Yes. You know that you are the mistress. Yes. Is it easier to be with him then? It is because you're less demanding and your expectations are less. Like, yeah. you, you, now you know your place. But we were not together. It was... Mm. I think we, we, we kind of wanted to hide the fact that we wanted to be together by saying we want closure. Mm. And that actually brought us back together and... But now when you were with him... Yes. You know, in these closure moments, mm -hmm. are you secretly hoping that... You, you remind him how much he loves you and then he leaves that other relationship? I don't think so. Because I was so hurt. You know, if, if it was a, a secret marriage somewhere yeah. and I didn't know about it, I was just so hurt that regardless of if he takes me back or we work on things, I'm still not going to be mm. the, not, the main, so yeah. to say. There's already a woman in, that, in, yeah. in his life, so it's just... I, I didn't really What was hurt, your feelings or your ego? Or that, is that the Both. same thing? Okay. Both. Because my ego is like, everyone knows I'm dating this guy. And oh. now that this is out, it's like, yo, she yeah. was actually the side chick. Yeah. And then my feelings, because I was really, I was, I was in love with him. I, okay. Yeah. It was not really love. I think I enjoyed his company and his personality more than, 
like now being older and mature, I know what love is. Mm. And that was just attention, I guess. I enjoyed the attention and the gifts and, you know, spoiling and going mm. around and all of that. So your child is, is, is born out of love? Yes. Or lust, but definitely a lie? Yes, a because huge lie. Because he's obviously lying to the wife. Huge lie. Okay, so where does that put you, you know, when you look at him, are you... Okay, yes, with children, I, I get it. There's, mm -hmm. there's nothing that can ever be wrong with a child, yes. right? But where does it put you now in, in how you deal with them? Because there's, there's just a tornado of lies that continue to happen. But that's the thing with, with the relationship that we had. As soon as it got into the media, there was no contact whatsoever. Oh, we one man. We don't deal with each other. Yes, we don't deal with each other. He doesn't exist. It's just me and my son. So Is he supporting the child? Nothing. Did you do paternity test? Yes. And so he, uh, and what did the test say? Negative. What's negative? The story of the DNA test. So when the story got out, he was like, no, I want to prove that it's not my child. I want to prove. He kept on pushing me because obviously at that time I had no lawyer. I had no representation. He came with his white lawyers, like bombarding us. Hey girl, you're going to do this. Wada, wada, wada. And I was Suits like, okay, <laughs> you know? And then I was like, um, okay. And then my dad was like, are you sure you want to go ahead with it? Because you don't know if he's like, this person was in your life. When I told him I was pregnant, he was there. He mm. supported you. He did everything. Now all of a sudden it's in the media and he's so confident he's not the father. Don't you think he's going to like try to rig the test mm. or, and I was like, oh, no, so you I went trust to him. His doctors. Yes. I was like, no, I trust him. You know, man, he was my man yeah. at that time. I was like, no, I trust why, him. Why, do why like does that. he think that the child could not be his? I, I basically think it's to protect himself and his family. Okay, cool. Because he accepted paternity when I told him. Yeah. It was only after it got into the media where he was like, oh. How did it get into the media? I don't know. Okay. I just, it was just an article on German. And I was like, yay. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So now you guys don't speak. At all. At all. And no contact. And he has no contact, and where he's sitting, the child is not his. Yes. So he's fine and he's happy with his wife. Has the wife ever reached out to you? No. Have you ever seen the wife? In person? Yes. No. Okay. And where do, where, where do you stand with your life? Are you moving on or are you waiting for him? I moved on. I think before, because I'm in a relationship right now. Okay. So before I got into my relationship, I used to like think, okay, maybe he'll come back. Let I me can't just, believe yeah, that. Let me just, let me, let me give him time, he'll come back to his senses. And then when I got into my relationship, my boyfriend made me realize, would see, in life you can't just wait for someone. I'm, I was just stagnant, I wasn't doing anything. I was like, when a guy comes, I'm like, no, like yeah. I'd make up excuses, but yeah. I know deep down I'm waiting yeah. for him to come back. But yeah, I, I moved on, I'm, I'm fine now. I made peace with it. I'm I love you, honestly, Tato. Thank you. Um, before we wrap up, what's the biggest lie do you think you told yourself in this entire thing, and do you still believe it? The biggest lie I told myself was, I forgive him. Ah, you don't. I don't. Just, I think I'm very angry. What are you doing to work with through that anger? Because that's not something that you should be sitting with. I know, you? I tried seeing someone, but it didn't go well. As like, an, I think she said I'm a closed book. Like, I'm, in order for therapy to work, you need to want it to work. So I was just sitting there, like, trying to find excuses to, for him, yeah. like to make him seem yeah. like he's a... He's a nice guy. Yes, and yeah. she was like, no, in order for this to work, you need to like, re like break down those walls and then And then realize that yes. we're not dealing with a nice yes. guy. Yes, but for now, I'm, that's why I'm saying, me saying I forgive him, it was just to please people to get out of my hair, yeah. but I never really did. And, and, your, and your family, do they think you're okay? I don't know, <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe that's something you should ask them. Okay, just, be, just sit them down. Forget the psychology. Yes, you can go there later, mm -hmm. but sit down with your family and say, when you guys are being honest with me, do you think that I am okay? And if I'm not, what should I be doing? That makes sense. Tato? Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Woo, thank you so much to our guest, Tato Mahaka, for sharing a story with us that we are all too familiar with. And I think if we had to deal with it all with this type of honesty, we're on our way to a bit of a breakthrough. After the break, we welcome back our experts to answer the question of how one remains in control of all the emotions that go on with discovering that you have been betrayed. Come back. Why do we cheat? And why do happy people cheat? And when we say infidelity, what exactly do we mean? Is it a hookup, a love story, 
paid sex, a chat room, a massage with happy endings. Why do we think that men cheat out of boredom and fear of intimacy, but women cheat out of loneliness and hunger for intimacy? And is an affair always the end of a relationship? Welcome back to Real Talk. Deny, deny, deny until you die. How often have you heard people share this as advice with a friend who has been caught straying from their relationship? It's all well and good to make flippant remarks and joke about a lot of us, are, 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 like how we, a lot of us are sharing our partners without even knowing it. But isn't it interesting how once you're the one who's being cheated on, then there's nothing funny about that situation. Welcome back, Martin Manamela, or you can call him the love doctor, as well as life coach. Tembiyama. Martin, why do people think that women do not lie? <laughs> because women are smarter. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> she's there's something in my ear. So I couldn't hear you. <laughs> sorry, say that again? Yeah, no, that's the truth. Women are more smarter. Yeah. You know, because we, we, you know, with men, we get too excited mm. uh, to a point where when you cheat, you want to tell your friend and a friend and a friend and a friend. Mm. Uh, and, and, and at the same time, you want to keep some of the stuff. Mm. You know, whether it's on your phone, wherever, you come back home, you smell in perfume, there's some makeup on your shirt and stuff like that. Women are clean. Mm. I mean, you can leave your wife at home, mm. you know, in, in her, you know, what do you call? Her, her ugly pajamas. Her ugly pajamas. Mm -hmm. And then she can quickly take a bath, go do whatever she does, and then come back and be in her pajamas again. Mm. When you come back, She's cooked. When we cheat, we even neglect you guys. That's the mm. thing. But when you guys do it, you do it so smart that you, you, know, you can still take care of me. Do you still do everything? But when I start cheating, then I forget to. I the do excitement. Stuff. The excitement. The excitement. I just now I've got a lot of things to do. Mm. I get out of the house, come back late, stuff like that. So we're very messy. We're not as smart as you guys. Okay, Timmy. Then why is it that we're so hell-bent on monogamy and monogamous relationships when the, the reality is it's something that is apparently unnatural for everyone? Mm. Um, because we're still stuck on our traditions, anything that was being done back then, uh, whatever we consider as traditions, yeah. is what we will try to adhere to. Yeah. A lot of us really do things for ourselves. We do things for family uh, to impress um, certain people or to be seen in good standing in society. Mm. A lot of people are suffering inside and they don't feel like being in these situations. But because that is what is perceived as normal or as successful, uh, people will make believe um, and continue while living a lie in secret and hoping to never be caught. Mm -hmm. And it's not only just monogamy, it's everything else. Um, even in terms of sexuality, mm. there are some things that are taboo in society and you will hide them and, and, and do what you believe uh, society wants you to do. Mm. Yeah. So then is, the re is our, our new reality with monogamy, uh, Martin, is that why marriages or relationships can survive betrayal and affairs? Is that we, we, we actually know that we've got a new reality towards it and a new attitude towards it, but we just don't want to admit it. Yeah, well, of course, uh, but it shouldn't be a way of survival. Yeah. We can still go back. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, you know, it's got to do with your personal, your personality, mm. you know. Um, do you have a discipline? And, and what do you want out of the relationship, you know? Mm. Um, all of, and, and once you look at the consequences mm. of your actions, what you stand to lose, if you are to cheat, for example, mm. you know, once you look at those things and you look at the, it's, it's, you know, not, let, let's not even go far. Mm. Just look at the joy that is in the home when you're not cheating. Mm. You don't have to lie, you know, because, 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 you know, cheating is, is such a whole lot of work. Because mm. you have to lie, you have to hide your phone, you have to, you know, all of the things are so much work and it's so much maintenance. Truth is so cheap. It's not too much maintenance. You are you're the same person every day. So, so, so I believe that she, she, you, know, you know, the new monogamy, which, mm. which is what we're talking about now, which is now you, you are at home, because this is what it is now. You are at home, you love your wife, but at the same time, you've got somebody else on the side. Mm. And, and you're saying, as long as my wife doesn't know, as long as my husband doesn't know. Mm. It's not about as long as there's so many things at stake. 
-hmm. you know, because you're giving yourself, you're you scattering yourself at the same mm -hmm. time. You're giving yourself to this person and that person at the same time. You're getting yourself confused. Mm -hmm. You don't have standards. Once you don't have a, you know, if you don't live with a particular moral code, if you don't believe that, um, you know, you can be loved and love yourself first, you'll always cheat. Mm. Always. Okay, it's going to be outside of the financial dependency because I know that that, that has been a, you know, a, a big co like common denominator as to why people would stay in relationships. And, and obviously, mostly women who stay with men who are cheating, right? It's the, the independence, the finance, financial dependency. Is it possible for me to know that my husband or my boyfriend is cheating and be okay with it? Uh, mentioning the financial dependency, um, if, if there are women who stay, yeah. um, even if the husband is cheating, there are women who stay even if the husband is being abusive, um, especially women who are not independent. Yeah. And um, staying with a cheater or an abuser, it may look good on the outside, you still get the comfort that mm. you want to get, you still get the money and everything. But in a way, it's dishonoring yourself. Mm. Uh, because the inner person um, adheres to certain moral principles. The inner person is pure. So at, at the end of the day, you will be unhappy uh, because the situation mm. that you are living is not aligned uh, to the to the with inner person with what's to be natural. Yes. But what happens if I'm I'm a person who believes that it is possible to be in love with two people? <laughs> you know, just mm -hmm. to end from where to pick up from where she left, I've had some women say it's better to cry in a Ferrari than in a <laughs> in a Mukuku. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and believing in, 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 in if somebody believes that they're okay with two people, yeah. those are the type of discussions we need to make before, before we get we into, get into that the relationship. relationship. Yeah. Well, look, sometimes uh, you, uh, people end up accepting. Yeah. that it's not that I, I, I'm okay with it. I've tried to work on it so much that it hasn't worked, mm. okay? And I'm not sure if I leave this guy, I can actually live on my own. Mm. I'm not sure. You, you know there's this thing of, uh, I can't live without you. Mm. Oh, that's a dangerous I, statement. I, in fact, not only dangerous. Can we just say the truth? It's stupid. Because you were able to live with him before this person was ever in your in, life. In fact, it's not stupid. You, it's a lie. It's even a lie. It's a lie. Yeah. Listen, how enlightening. I hope you are on the same journey that I am here. Uh, thank you so much to our guest, Martin Manamela, the love doctor, and Tembi Hama. After all the lying, the cheating, the crying, the next phase is forgiveness. To forgive or not to forgive the person who has ruined your relationship by lying and cheating, that is the question we'll be answering next. Come back to us. Now, there are three ways that I think infidelity hurts differently today. We have a romantic ideal in which we turn to one person to fulfill an endless list of needs, to be my greatest lover, my best friend, the best parent, my trusted confidant, my emotional companion, my intellectual equal. And I am it. I'm chosen. I'm unique, I'm indispensable, I'm irreplaceable, I'm the one. And infidelity tells me I'm not. It is the ultimate betrayal. Infidelity shatters the grand ambition of love. But if throughout history, infidelity has always been painful, today it is often traumatic because it threatens our sense of self. Welcome back to Real Talk on SABC 3, where the stage is yours. Do you believe in the mantra, forgive and forget? It is said that the act of forgiveness is giving up the right to punish someone who has harmed you, thereby freeing yourself of the anger that can overtake and destroy your life. But as I'm sure we've all experienced, forgiving the next person is easier said than done. To wrap up our conversation on lying in relationships, we look at the role that forgiveness plays in helping us move on from being wronged by others. We welcome back our converse, to our conversation, clinical psychologist Ingrid Nagia and relationship coach Kofi Ofori Buting. Ingrid, I'll come to you. Obviously, there are psychological benefits to forgiving, yes. right? But what are the necessary steps to go through in forgiving so that I can find that it's beneficial and I'm not just making nice? So let's start with the benefit of forgiveness for the person that has been wronged. 
So yeah. for me, the most important thing is to identify what forgiveness is. Mm. And forgiveness is about being able to let go of a white hot feeling that is burning you on the inside. Mm -hmm. It's not about foregoing the right to punish. Mm. It's not about resuming a relationship. Mm. Okay, but it's rather about being able to, to make sense of, come to terms with what has happened because mm. you can't change it and moving on with your life. Mm. So does that mean that we resume a relationship? No, no, not at all. You know, forgiveness has many components to it. The partner that has wronged you, is that person remorseful? Mm -hmm. Are they willing to make amends? Mm -hmm. So it's not good enough to just acknowledge, well, I cheated. Mm. You know, you have to be able to, to be accountable for it. Mm. And more importantly, have, they have to work towards um, restoring intimacy and trust. Mm -hmm. And then you have enough of the ingredients that are going to go into forgiveness. Mm. It's not um, one or the other. Yeah. Mm. Kofi, the structure of infidelity mm -hmm. is secrecy, yeah. right? But many a time we've heard, I'm not angry that you cheated, I'm angry that you lied about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so <laughs> is, is, is that state, I, I find the statement to be crazy because naturally if I'm cheating, I'm gonna lie about mm -hmm. it. So I, I, is there sanity in that statement? Um. Well, I'm not a clinical psychologist, so I couldn't really speak to sanity. Okay, but yeah. but I, I personally have an issue with it because um, it speaks to a denial of self and it speaks to a lack of knowledge of self. Mm. If you truly know yourself and if you truly love yourself and value yourself, then mm. you're going to put yourself in a situation where I, I spoke earlier of safety. Yes. So you keep yourself in a safe, safe space. To tell the person that I would have preferred if you lie to me, that's not safe. Right? Okay. It's not safe. Mm. Um, and already their actions show you that they're not too concerned with your safety. So now you're basically giving them further ammo. Well, you know, it's perfectly okay for you to, you know, keep me in this unsafe territory. Yeah. Just next time, let me know about it. Mm. Oh. So, so it, it almost gives them permission to continue that kind of behavior. And, f and for me, that makes absolutely no sense. Okay, we'll wrap this conversation up with a, a WhatsApp voice note. Please roll it. Good evening. We tuned into um, Real Talk. Um, Good look. evening. We tuned into um, Real Talk with Anele and we are enjoying the conversation so much. Um, just a quick question. How many chances are you supposed to be giving the person that breaks your heart and cheats on you? Is there a limit of chances, maybe? Ooh, coffee, that's yours. And then, Ingrid, you'll wrap it up for us. <laughs> um, okay, so... so I was asked the question, did they really break your heart or did, did you break your own heart? Yeah. Because many times um, in psychology, they, they have a term called theory. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it's theory of mind, mm -hmm. where you tell yourself a story. And um, a lot of people tell themselves stories about the ideal relationship. You know, um, he's, he's Prince Charming, he's this, he's that. You sell yourself a story. And when you find out the reality about the person, then your heart breaks. So. Did they really break your heart or did you break your own heart? That's the first thing. Then secondly, um, are you willing to take responsibility for the role that you played in creating this fantasy? Mm. Once, once you take responsibility for that, it empowers you to now decide, okay, fine, am I willing to continue in truth with this person? Is it possible? Mm. Um, and in truth with myself, most importantly. Mm. And if you can do that, then um, honestly, truthfully, and maturely, and you made a very powerful point earlier about emotional maturity. Mm. If you can do it with that level of maturity, then anything is possible. I personally, though, believe that you will need to take some time off to find out more about yourself, find out about what you really want for yourself before you even start considering those kinds of conversations. Mm. Ingrid. Adding to what Kofi just said, you know, I think that the first thing you had, that you do have to think about is what are you willing to settle for? So we talked about patterns of behavior. You know, if somebody's truly, truly sorry for what they've done, will they repeat the pattern of behavior? And the answer is most often they're not, no. Uh -huh. That's what makes them remorseful. Uh -huh. If somebody's really guilty about their behavior, they're going to want to change it. Uh -huh. So if you're asking me the question, how many times should I take him back? Clearly he's making the mistake over and over and over. And perhaps to him it's not a mistake, but rather a need. Perhaps uh -huh. it is about a sense of entitlement. Mm -hmm. And so if your partner is cheating on you, um, you know, in, in a serial fashion, mm -hmm. it's a pattern of behavior that's established. The mm -hmm. chances are you're not going to go back to a monogamous relationship. 
If that's your expectation, then I wouldn't give him another chance because he's established a pattern of behavior already. Mm -hmm. So basically what they're saying is, if he cheats on you once and then he hurts you and he forgives you, that's his fault. When he cheats after that, it's both your fault because you are then allowing it. So how many times should you forgive him? As many times as you're willing to break your own heart. Thank you so much. A big thank you to all our guests for adding their voice to today's very important conversation. If there's one thing we can all take away from today's show is that we've all probably lied in one way or another to our loved ones, uh, but it is the beginning to be honest with ourselves that we can change the lying behavior. Tomorrow on Real Talk, how are those fitness resolutions going for you? Speaking of lying, uh, it's only March, but some of you have probably already abandoned your training programs. We feel you. That's why we've got the fitness bunny, Asmat and Pisani amongst others as we change into our workout gear and get back to training. We will see you then. Isitingo is up next. Ciao.